Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I just want to get started. We are um, just beyond the 12 o'clock mark. So I just want to welcome everyone to this afternoon session, and it's great to see you here. Um, it's a pleasure to see you here. Um, this is a very special session for us as part of Alumni Weekend. We are very delighted to be joined by Dean Susan Greenbaum um, for this one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. conversation where she um, reflects upon the year that's been just passed and um, talks about some exciting things that, that are happening at the school for alumni and are in the pipeline for this coming year. Um, we will also be celebrating and honoring some amazing alumni um, that we have had at the school and who've done amazing, uh, you know, who had amazing achievements in their professional careers, and um, they, are, they are joining us here today. So we will be celebrating them with the SPS Alumni Awards in the second half of the session. Um, but most importantly, I wanted to invite Dean Greenbaum to welcome everyone. Dean Greenbaum, you're muted. Do you mind unmuting yourself before you... There you go. Okay, sorry, everyone. Let me begin again. Uh, it's my pleasure to say hello and greet all of our wonderful alumni. It's so I am talking to you from New York City, where it's a sort of a grim day, but mild. Um, but it's not grim and mild in this Zoom room. And I'm so uh, delighted to be able to be uh, speaking to you, welcoming you in spite of the world we're living in today with the pandemic. Uh, you know, in a time when social distancing has become a normal part of our everyday lives, I truly welcome this opportunity to be able to connect directly with alumni around the globe and many other members of the SPS community, bridging the distance with a few words about the ways we have come together during this pandemic. The dedication and loyalty of our alumni is remarkable. I would like to thank the members of the NYU Alumni Association who do exceptional work to keep our alumni connected to their alma mater. I'd like to recognize Lillian Jackson, Coram Gore, Larry Mantrone, Stephanie Matera, and John Burnett. Thank you for all you do to work so hard on our behalf. And a very special welcome to our 2020 honorees, Kia Clark, Casey Rotter, and Aditya Kashyap, who we will be celebrating shortly. I'm thank you, Sonal. Yes, thank you, Green Greenbaum. Um, so if without further ado, I would love to get started with the Q&A uh, portion of it. Um, so Dean Greenbaum, uh, the first question to you today is, um, academic year 2021 is proving to be a year like no other. How has the school adapted to this new normal and what challenges do you continue to face? Uh, yes, this has been quite the year. I've been in higher ed for close to 35 years and I have never seen, and we've lived through a lot of things and recessions and storms and no electricity, um, so many things, but we have never had to be as adaptable, as patient, as self-disciplined uh, and mutually responsible for each other. So we had to give up old habits. We had to learn new ways. When the trigger was pulled in March that we as a university was going totally remote, like the rest of um, organizations in New York City and indeed around the country and globe, we had to be very, very flexible. And our faculty stepped up. They stepped up in so many innumerable ways and taught the rest of the spring semester, started gaining their footing and understanding of what it's like to be in the remote environment. And over the summer, continue to hone their skills we at SPS are really fortunate that we have a team dedicated to academic ex excellence. 
and our faculty took advantage. Every other week we met with faculty and there were hundreds that attended to learn new techniques, new ways of um, engaging our students, understanding how it's different in a learning environment to be remote and our faculty stepped up extraordinarily and we worked with them to do that. Uh, along the way, our students had to understand and learn and adapt as well. So it was a huge lift and our staff supported them and the summer was extraordinarily uh, busy <clears throat> as we got ready for the fall. So here we are in the fall, it's going well. Uh, we have uh, thousands of students at our school and across the university and our students are learning with three ways of instruction. They're either um, in totally remote environment, they're in person, or there's something uh, in a class that we call blended. So let me explain that for a moment uh, for you so you can understand it. Our classes at SPS typically have a class size of 15 to 20 students. And our, our classrooms are designed for that capacity. All of a sudden now we're faced with the social distancing requirements. I prefer to think of it as physical distancing. And we had to set up each of our classrooms to have six feet between students in all directions and a, and a faculty space of nine to 10 feet to let them keep distance, but still move um, in at the front of the classroom. We needed to, um, and to do this all right, we needed to add new and upgrade technology in the classroom. But what happened was that 20 students registered for a class as always, but now with this physical distancing, we could only fit 10 students in the classroom. Otherwise we'd be violating uh, the health recommendations. So what we did is create an environment where students rotate and one cohort of 10 would be in class, for example, on Tuesday. And the other co that other cohort would be zooming into that class, not be present. And then the next day of the class, perhaps Thursday, the students who had zoomed in came into the classroom and the others were on Zoom. And so therefore we call it blended. There's always people in the classroom and Zooming in. So it is certainly a challenge and different, but our uh, population has adopted and uh, the new techniques and new learning skills, and it's been going quite well. I'm glad to hear that. Um, certainly very challenging for both faculty and staff. One of the busiest summers we've ever, ever had as we prepped for the fall semester. Um, you know, we've all pulled together to provide the best educational experience for our students. And yet, even across our physical separation, we can very clearly see the values that join us, that continue to hold us all together. Susan, how has this past year shaped and redefined the mission and values that the school holds dear? Uh, thanks for that question, because as soon as I uh, came into the deanship, it became very clear from conversations that I was having across the school and with um, the various constituencies that SPS is a very diverse, desegregated, decentralized group that has a sports institute, a hospitality institute, a, a real estate institute, the on and on, seven different divisions. And those, each of the divisions operated and understood their work within their division, but there was no coming together across the schools. And so the uh, who SPS was, wasn't clear at all. It was made up of so many different academic programs that there was a need uh, clearly um, to identify who we are, a unifying mission that will bring us all together and identify who we are, what we do, and what sets us apart. So we went about articulating in one simple yet compelling narrative, which was crafted to read, and I read it now, prepare our students to succeed at all stages of their educational and professional journeys by providing transformative learning steeped in real world applications 
while impacting global industries, professions, and communities. That's a mouthful, but it says a lot. And it's on the scaffolding underneath it are the values that you're seeing um, uh, on this uh, document in front of you. I'm not going to spend time going over all of it, but I invite you to come to our website because and to look at it. And I've met with members of the alumni community, uh, our students, our faculty, our staff, and I'm working with them to make sure that this mission inspires all of our work, that helps shape our work, that recognizes a path for us to move forward. Uh, remember, SPS teaches high school students, and it also teaches throughout all our programs, academic programs, it has a huge non-credit portfolio that teaches uh, students of all ages up to their very senior years. So it's very, um, we are all encompassing and we wanted to make that known about the uniqueness of our school. So I hope that you see that it does uh, crystallize our identity and provide that anchor for our unique brand of education and the ways in which we express and promote it. Yeah, this was no um, no easy task, Susan. I can say that because you know we've, especially our alumni, will agree that you know the challenges that you just defined were exactly what alumni face as well. You know, we they all identify very strongly with their divisions, but the school identity was something that we were all struggling to kind of really pin down. So this has been very, very helpful in doing so. Um, the next question for you, Susan, is that while in-person events and programming are important ways to keep our alumni network strong and active, how do you propose alumni who have joined us today stay connected with the SPS community and with each other in this remote environment? So uh, thanks to you and your team um, and the work of the departments, uh, we have created an extensive virtual programming uh, array during this crisis. And one of the most important research sources that I encourage you to use is our new digital networking platform, the SPS Violet, Violet Network. We have over 15,000 alumni and students already on the platform using it as a network, to mentor with each other globally. SPS is a special hub dedicated to its alumni with exclusive access to over 250 webinars, 100 events and industry identity and regional groups. If you want to uh, join it, and I hope that you're all on it, but if not, at the end of this session, uh, we will, uh, you can find it in the chat box. Please come on it, it's amazing. We've also launched a new digital web series called Alumni Conversations, which features weekly conversations with alumni from across the world as they recount their time on campus and their professional journeys. Indeed, um, our own Associate Dean Anna Kandoulis was interviewed as a part of this, and many of you may know her. She's been um, at SPS uh, and NYU uh, as long as I have, so I hope you'll uh, take advantage and look at that interview. In addition, we have an exclusive roster of virtual events that one can choose that span industry panels, career development, professional networking, alumni gatherings, and social mixers. Most of those webinars are recorded and are also available as on-demand content on the SPS Violet Network. So please do check them out. Uh, events such as our virtual CEO check-in, which was hosted last spring by the Jonathan Tisch Center for Hospitality and featured a lineup of hospity, hospitality industry executives. That event was attended by over 3,000 people. The Shack Institute of Real Estate hosted the inaugural National Dialogue on the Black experience in real estate industry, which addressed issues of race, inclusion, and was attended by over 1,200 colleagues in industry, academia, and policymaking. And our DPB, Division of Programs in Business, hosted its annual tax controversy forum, which had over 12,000 people in attendance. So let me ask you, 
Did any of you attend these events? If not, I sure hope you will in the future. In addition, we have several alumni events that are hosted by regional alumni chapters across the world, and they are continuing. I encourage you to engage in the SPS community wherever you may be. Thank you, Dean Greenbaum. Um, so um, just to reiterate what Dean Greenbaum said earlier in the conversation, a link to join the SPS Violet Network is available now on the GTR chat box, which accompanies this particular session. And uh, all other details enabling you to join our virtual platform, our, check out our website, and also follow us on our social media will all be available at the very end of the session on a holding site. So please do check them out and please do join and follow us wherever you need. Um, another question for you, Dean Green Mom, is that, um, and I don't know how many of our audience members are aware of this, but I wanted to let them know that Dean Greenbaum graciously agreed to take on the role of NYU SPS Dean through the summer of 2021. This past May, the university began the process to identify the next Dean. Um, Susan, would you like to say a few words to reflect upon your time with SPS? Yes, I, I will reflect on my time, but my time isn't over, so no, <laughs> I'm still here to next summer and hard at work on many of the uh, uh, goals that we've set for ourselves to accomplish. But I have to say, um, I'm at NYU nearly 35 years and uh, working at SPS has been an extraordinary pleasure. Uh, each day talking with our faculty and, and, and the hard, uh, the passion that they demonstrate, the, the thoughtfulness with which they approach the classroom how they care about what's happening in industry and making sure that this is not just an education that sits off in a cloud, but it's applicable that our students can use and learn from and, uh, and uh, profit from as they go into internships and their uh, career after graduation. Uh, so the faculty have inspired me and the students, oh my, the students, I can't tell you how, if I hope that through the mentoring program, you can sign up and be a mentor. Our students are extraordinary. They care so deeply. They care about the education they're getting. They care about contributing to society and to our community. And they are so proactive. They're not, oh, woe is me. We're in a pandemic. This isn't perfect. They are trying as hard as they can to make this an extraordinary experience and use what they're doing here in their role as uh, students and learners to take with them into the workplace because this world of remote is not going away anytime soon. Even when pandemic is behind us, I think the remote working and learning will uh, still be a hard uh, part of, a key part of what we're all doing. And I, you know, SPS is the thought leader. It, it serves as an incubator for new ideas in our industries that we serve. It's a very distinct brand of education. It's faculty driven, student focused, research based, and centered on practical application. So I uh, have to say that our working with these faculty and the students is complemented by a staff that's second to none. The, uh, all the teams are so supportive of each other and caring about the work and professionalism. So I have to say it's been extraordinary um, and I'm here and uh, for you until next summer. And I'm quite sure that we will find a, a wonderful uh, new Dean to, to take the baton on. And I welcome you to send nominations to SBS Dean Search at nyu.edu. I am sure um, uh, we will be able to advance the mission and values of the school. Well, I can personally say, Dean Greenbaum, it's been such an absolute pleasure working with you. And you've been very supportive. And you've guided us through uh, the past few years. So thank you very much for that. Um, and we will be very sad to see you go. But we are hoping you'll always be around. <laughs> I will. Uh, uh, 
So that brings us to the end of our Q&A with Dean Greenbaum. Um, without further ado, I would love to segue into our SPS Alumni Awards um, and invite Dean Greenbaum to announce the awards and uh, celebrate our honorees. Thanks so much, Sonal. I am now honored to present the Bart Lawson Alumni Awards to three valued members of the SPS alumni community. They are all worthy recipients nominated for these honors by their fellow alumni. We are proud to have them as members of our alumni community. I am pleased to present the 2020 Distinguished Alumna Award to Kia Clark. Kia graduated with a master's in sports management in 2006 and is one of the most prominent female graduates of the program. She has had an illustrious career in women's basketball and is currently in her 10th season with NYU Liberty, one of the premier teams in the WNBA. Kia serves as CEO where she leads and manages all business aspects of the Liberty organization, including strategic planning, revenue, P&L, and operations. Additionally, Kia works with stakeholders on key elements of team business, including growing the fan base, maximizing sales and fan engagement, and improving business performance. Among her many awards, the Westchester County Business Council named Clark to its 2018 class of rising stars. In 2019, she was recognized by Cranes New York Business as a notable woman in the business of sports, and in 2020, she was also named to Involve's 2020 list of top 100 ethnic minority executives and Sports Illustrated, the unrelenting list. Kia, through this award and recognition, we celebrate your amazing professional achievements and for paving the way and being a strong voice for women and people of color in the sports industry. You are an inspiring example to our students and alumni. Please join me in congratulating Kia. Kia, I invite you to accept this award and say a few words. Dean Greenbaum, Kia is unable to join us live today. So we have some recorded remarks for her, from her that we'd like to play for everyone. Sound off. I am very much pleased and humbled to receive the 2020 Distinguished Alumna Award. When Sonal Pandey reached out to me to share the news, I was both shocked and overwhelmed with gratitude that my fellow alums had nominated me for this prestigious honor. I'll share with you that when I graduated in 2006, believe it or not, my plan was not to become the CEO of a WNBA team. All I knew was that I was passionate about women, sports, and community. I was compelled to take what I had learned and experienced in the sports program and apply it to my professional life for a career that is immeasurably rewarding. The curricula, the training, and the faculty all contributed to making me the professional that I am today. But most importantly, it was the connections that I made that impelled me forward and encouraged me to tenaciously pursue a career in professional sports. I have great pride in leading one of the WNBA's original franchises in the New York Liberty, and I could not do this work efficiently without my training from NYU. Again, I am extremely grateful for this honor, and I hope to see you all in Brooklyn for a Liberty game much sooner than later. Thank you. Thank you, Kia. Um, I hope we I hope we can join you in Brooklyn to see a game real soon. That would be all of our pleasure. I'm now pleased to recognize Casey Rotter with the 2020 Distinguished Public Service Award. Casey graduated with a master's in fundraising and grant making in 2009 from SPS at the top of her class. She is the founder and global lead for UNICEF's Next Generation Next Gen for UNICEF program. Based in Los Angeles, she led UNICEF Next Generation leadership, development, and membership across the USA for the last 11 years and is now expanding the program globally. 
What is even more remarkable and a testament to the amazing program at SPS is that UNICEF Next Generation was born from Casey's capstone project, which he, in which he wrote how nonprofit organizations should engage Generation X and Y to cultivate their next generation of major donors, supporters, advocates, and board members. Casey is a recipient of the 2012 Forward Under 40 Award from the University of Wisconsin, was named 2014 Grand Marshal and Distinguished Alumni by the University of Wisconsin, and was honored by Dell as one of Dell's 100 inspiring people in their hashtag inspire 100 campaign, where she was one of 25 in the world changers category. She sits on the board of the University of Wisconsin-Madison International Division and the advisory board of the American Friends of Yahad in Unum, as well as a member of Chief, which is a network for executive women. Please join me in congratulating Casey. Casey, I invite you to accept the word award and say a few words. Thank you so much, Dean Greenbaum. And thank you, Renal, Emma Kwong, and the School of Professional Studies and the Selection Committee. It is truly an honor to receive an award from a place that gave me so much. My time at NYU is very special to me and helped me shape my career in a way that I never could have ever imagined possible. I remember the head of um, the Heyman Center, the legendary Naomi Levine, would often describe the power of nonprofits using New York City specifically as an example. She used to ask us to imagine what the city would look like with no museums, um, no parks, no theater. Uh, she opened me up to the power of fundraising and made me wanna be a part of that ecosystem. It's thanks to her, this school, Yala, uh, Vera Yelenik, my capstone advisor, Marion Stern, Alyssa Friedberg, Maeli Morano, my teachers and classmates um, who inspired me and helped launch my career down this path. I get to work every day to make the world a little bit better of a place for children. Um, I love what I do. And then to be honored by a school that helped make that happen, well, it brings it all um, full circle in the most magical way. So thank you all. Thank you, Casey. Um, yes, uh, Yelena runs a wonderful center for global affairs. And uh, you mentioned Naomi Levine. Um, I knew her quite well and worked with her for many years. She's in her 90s and she's still going strong. So uh, she's an inspiration to all of us. And the last award of this afternoon, but in no way the least, is the Distinguished Young Alumnus Award that I am honored to do bestow on Aditya Vikram Kashyap. Aditya graduated with a master's in management and systems in 2016 from SPS specializing in enterprise risk management. Aditya is a senior program manager in the financial crimes technology division at Morgan Stanley, New York. He's a technologist, speaker, and an innovator known, renowned for his expertise in creating surveillance technologies that aim to prevent, detect, and mitigate suspicious activities and client behaviors globally. Aditya's work of building complex risk assessment models and algorithms contributes to safeguarding client assets and enhances, um, and enhances due diligence and compliance of anti money laundering and anti-corruption laws. These complex risk frameworks and algorithms act like a first line of defense against threat agents like fraud, identity impersonation, terrorist financing, tax evasion, money laundering, insider trading, and more. Over the years, Aditya has won numerous awards for his leadership, expertise and relentless drive to build a safer financial ecosystem. These include the Morgan Stanley Mentor of the Year 2018, Morgan Stanley Technology Excellence Award 2017, and Drexel 40 Under 40 2019, to name a few. Through this award and recognition, we celebrate your amazing professional achievements and recognize you for your exceptional innovation and leadership at Morgan Stanley. 
Aditya, I invite you to accept the award and say a few words. A very good afternoon to the respected office bearers, distinguished faculty, staff, friends and families of NYUSPS. I feel deeply honored and overwhelmed with joy on receiving this year's Distinguished Young Alumni Award. Thank you, Dean Greenbaum, the alumni relations team, the amazing NYUSPS faculty, and to everyone who has made this journey so incredibly memorable. I couldn't have done it without your support, guidance, and unwavering belief in my abilities. I'd like to dedicate this award to my family, my mom, my dad, and my sister. You've always inspired me, supported me, and been there for me all these years like a rock. You have made me the person I am today, and it is your sacrifices and prayers that have made this possible. There are not enough words to express my gratitude for giving me the strength, courage, and wisdom to take on challenges and having the fortitude to convert each challenge into a milestone itself. We are living in extenuating unforeseen circumstances for the last six months. These times have been uncertain and full of challenges. Who knew the world would really come to a halt? I would also like to take the opportunity to thank the people on the front lines in uniform, our troops and medical personnel who are working tirelessly to make sure that you and I remain safe. I want to say your dedication, selfless actions and sacrifice inspires me every single day to do my bit, however big or small it may be. We all can make a difference if we just make an effort to do so. I hope I can use this forum to reach out to each and every one of you here this afternoon to strive to be the best version of ourselves that we could ever be. Let us make an effort to learn something new, explore ourselves and make ourselves better every single day. It does not take much, a conscious effort to be better than I was yesterday is all I asked for. Keep learning, unlearning, and relearning my friends. Together we can build a much more powerful and a much more beautiful world. Leaving you with this noble thought in mind and a heart filled with gratitude, I once again thank you Dean Greenbaum, NYUSPS faculty and staff for bestowing this honor upon me. I'm indeed honored to accept this award. Thank you once again. Thank you, Aditya. Those were inspiring words um, and we can all live by them to uh, learn something new, make ourselves better in this moment, care deeply about each other and our communities. I, I couldn't agree with you more. And, and the work you do, um, uh, I think they need you in Washington. Um, so uh, think about that. I think they need help in that regard. Uh, in closing, I want to say that our alumni are the embodiment of SPS values. You are, you've heard them here today, and we are so grateful to all of you who are doing what you can to support our initiatives and our student and al our alumni community during these unprecedented times. I'm so grateful that you joined us this afternoon. Don't forget to check out our next session called SPS Live Tours at 2 p.m during which two SPS alumni will take us on behind the scenes tours of two very exciting places, the Kansas City Stadium and a store called Tipsy Scoop where they make alcohol infused ice cream. I think I'll get myself a scoop now. I'm uh, wishing you good health and high spirits. Stay safe and be well. Good to see you all. <laughs>